It is the first Sunday in Advent. It is the start of a new church year, and we are delighted you are with us to worship in person, joining us virtually, whether in real time or later, and invite you, if you have not already done so, to download the full text booklet at S-F-A-E-C. In it are all our hymns and all our scripture readings, as well as all our prayers. We begin this morning with hymn 57, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
before you, holy and living one. Let us pray together the Collect of Purity at the bottom of page 4. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. in 
the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. My Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This morning, our first lesson is from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But in your anger, and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord. Do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Here is the reading. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Jesus Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. 
From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed be God's holy name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. The topic of the email blared. Cooking with children is messy, but do it anyway. Dealing with the scriptures today is messy, but we're going to do it anyway. You heard most recently that passage from Mark, that passage about what seems to be end times and what they'll look like. Some people call it Mark's little apocalypse. And in it, we have dropped in partway through the reading on this first Sunday of Advent we drop in about end times and interestingly at the end of this church year come next November God willing we'll hear the first part of this passage the church in her wisdom did not give us these readings sequentially, but rather mix them up because truth is our understanding of time is linear, is not God's time. And when there are endings, there are beginnings. And when there are beginnings, there are endings. And so we are immersed in that reality. It was rather deliberate that you all sang a very familiar hymn, tune-wise, before we got to the gospel. Did you recognize the other thing we sing to it? All glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King. It's what we wave our palm branches to. Because we, in this reading, are dropped into the midst of Holy Week. Jesus has already ridden into Jerusalem. And on this day, he and his followers are standing outside the temple. And his followers say, look, look how wonderful it is to see all these stones stacked together. What a beautiful sight. And Jesus knows what is coming and tries to prepare them that things will not stay the way they see them. And that even when destruction comes, God will still be with them. And the angels will be starting to watch over them. And it's the message 
that Paul is encouraging as we drop in on the beginning of his letter, first letter, to the Corinthians. We human beings struggle with the fact that the moment we're in might look very different the next moment, sometimes in wonderful ways. Sometimes there's a delightful surprise in life. But as Jesus is also preparing us, sometimes we want to run for cover. We want to hide in the hills. These things are happening that we have no control over, and we want to protect ourselves every way we can. One of the challenges of living in the moment is how we interact with one another. I don't know about you, but all too often I'm on to the next thing as I'm wrapping up my conversation, not staying present, not being where I should. And then there's that annoying thing in my head, the critic. The critic that keeps saying, well, if this were different, or they did that, or if I did this, And I complain away the grace of the moment. It's a very easy thing to do. But in my life, I have known devastating losses. In one year, in July of 1987, my mother died in a car accident. On February 14th of 1988, our only nephew, at 18, died in a car accident. And I know how fragile life is, and I know many of you all do too. So our invitation this Advent, this new year, is to look at what we have differently, to pause in the moments we are given, and appreciate them for what they are. To spend time with the person in front of us and not do the critic thing, well, if only they had said, or if only they would do, but to be truly present, truly with them. Anthony DeMilo, in The Way to Love, wrote these words. How very few understand what love really is and how it arises in the human heart. Love springs from awareness. It is only in as much as you see someone as she or he really is here and now and not as they are in your memory or your desire or your imagination or protection that you can truly love them. Otherwise, it is not the person that you love, but the idea of the person you have formed, or this person as the object of your desire, and not as he or she is in themselves. If you achieve this kind of awareness of the other, you will know what love is. And so I invite each and every one of us, as this new year begins, to pause, to stop, and to appreciate the moment, the people, the day that you have. It is not ours to decide how any day will go, no matter how much we'd like to pretend it is. Life happens, and life can be fragile. But we still have the moment we are in. For those of you who grew up on a show called Full House, John Stamos is now doing a book tour promoting his book. 
And in that book, he has the gift of a chapter on Bob Saget. In it, he talks about their long relationship, how they were like brothers from doing this show, not once, but twice. And as it happened, one night he and Bob and their spouses went out for dinner. And he said Bob was so intentional about being in the moment we had. We lingered longer over each part of the meal. We talked about how blessed we were. How many things we had enjoyed and how grateful we were for those gifts. John goes on to say, I did not know it would be our last time together. And many of us have had moments when we did not know it would be our last time together. But we do know that we can take that practice talked about of lingering longer of pausing and being in the moment, of looking at the one in front of us as the gift they are, no matter how many times they've gotten on your last nerve, appreciate that they can do that. And in that practice, may we see this new year in a new light and God give us the grace to see God's presence with us, sustaining us, faithfully preserving us, no matter what, what comes our way. The Nicene Creed found on page 13. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
brothers and sisters, we joyfully await the glorious coming of the Christ. Let us pray for the needs of the church, our community, and the world. Circle us, Lord. Circle us with the light of your presence, bright within this dark world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire. O oh God, who was, who is, and who is to come, circle us with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle our families and our community within the shelter of your outstretched arms, including those on our parish family prayer cycle, Natalie, Andra, and Andra Wilson, the Wong family, Carol Woody, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for Project Canterbury, prayers of thanksgiving for the Habitat Home dedication for the Pony family. Protect them in each moment of their lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. O oh God who was, who is, and who is to come, circle our families and community within the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle this nation with Advent love and hope. Create a desire to listen to the Advent message. Create a willingness to understand and respond. Create a need to reach out to the Christ child. O God who was, who is, and who is to come, circle our nation with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle the departed with the grace of your love, including First Lady Rosalind Carter. Grant to them eternal rest. Raise them to join with your Son in the fellowship of all the saints. O oh God, who was, who is, and who is to come, circle the departed with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle this world with the joy of your salvation. We pray for those on our prayer list, including Ann Acock, Sherry Bergman, Parker Bolton, Malcolm Bowden, the Brewer family, Pat Cahill, the Copeland family, Rusty and Piper, Dockery and family, the Giles family, Bruce Go Groberg, the Groberg family, Mary and George Hester, Roger Higgins, Darren Honeycutt, Diane Honeycutt, Hazel Honeycutt, Cindy and Rich Lavala, Bob and Dina Lemire, Riley Lowry and family, Margaret McCullough, Frank Melton, Dee Dee Miller, Gary Morton, Darlene Neighbors, Carol Noon, Dempsey Reynoso, the Robertson family, Joe and Sharon Zielinski, Paul Sloat, the Thompson family, J Jerry Travers, Sarah Tullock, the Wicker family, Mike Wilson, Alex, Bob S, and Bob, Gail H, Jessica, Ken, Christy, Lindsay, family of Luke, Mary, Mike, Nicole, Tina, Tom, Tori, Vanya, and Dan, Woody. Where there is sickness and disease, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is torture and oppression, bring release. Establish your just kingdom on the earth. O God who was, who is, and who is to come, circle this world with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle the church with the courage to accomplish your will on the earth including Michael, our presiding bishop, 
and Brian, our Bishop for St. Luke's in Cleveland of our Diocese of East Tennessee. For St. John's in Brown Valley of our Companion Diocese of South Dakota. Empower us to be faithful stewards of your bounty. Empower us to be faithful witnesses to your love. O oh God who was, who is, and who is to come. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. brought your pledge cards please do put them in the offering basket if we are hearing uh, some people did not receive their mailing if you did not receive it there are pledge cards out in the, the narthex there's even the whole packet sends the envelope that it was carried in that you can pick up and take with you and we apologize we understand that our uh, post office has kind of made the news because they're currently sending our mail to be sorted in Nashville and then come back. So um, hopefully those who have not received them yet will get them sometime soon. Um, but please do uh, put your pledge cards in today and we are offering those pledge cards up on the offer, altar as we do our communion and give them to the glory of God and with thanks for all who filled them out. As we get ready for communion, let us hear again that refrain that was in Psalm 80. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Thank you. Okay, he's all 
come of you, O Lord. We continue on page 17. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with blessed Francis, blessed Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
We continue in prayer at the top of page 21. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for a few brief announcements, and I really am going to, despite what I said in my sermon, I'm flying through this. Uh, please stick around. We've got wonderful food, parish meeting. All of you are invited to be part of this meeting. We have child care available for those who would be more comfortable doing that, whether it's the child or the adult, I'll let you decide. And um, know that this evening we'll be back here again at 5 p.m. with our evening soup supper. We'll have a, a simple evening worship and then soup supper and talk about Hildegard von Bingham, who um, is one of the great influencers of the church and had much to do with how we sing in church, even though that was a thousand years ago. So we invite you to come back and be part of that conversation. The week ahead, Creekside tomorrow, Tuesday. Larry Hartman will represent us as another Habitat House is dedicated. I will be at Bishop and Council. And then in the afternoon, we will have lessons in the parish hall. And remember, from 10 to 2, Mountain Point Cooperative, the homeschool group, is in our parish hall and kitchen. So very busy. Wednesday, a slight change. We will pack sack packs at 515, but at 6, we'll come in here because it's time to walk stations of the nativity again. So we'll do that Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And um, if you can't join us in real time, please feel free. We'll keep the booklets out in the narthex, and you can come walk these um, stations that tell the story of Jesus' birth and spend time in prayer and reflection. A, a good, good respite in this busy season. So I invite you to consider doing that. Thursday, we have music lessons in Tai Chi. And then on Saturday, 10 a.m., children, it's time for the annual play for all of you all to present at the 10 o'clock service on December 10. So we want you all back here at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. We'll feed you. Miss Kirsten will be here. Yay! <laughs> so please come back and be part of that. Um, so a lot going on. I don't want to take much more of your time, but again, uh, please do grab your food and come back in here for the meeting. It is birthday and anniversary Sunday. I know somebody's here whose husband's birthday was yesterday, and I hope she will come forward to re represent him and all other December birthdays and anniversaries. Please come forward. You hate it when I do that, I know. Now, how am I going <laughs> to? I even know your anniversary is June 25th. Y'all don't realize <laughs> dates. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to John. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary. Thank you all. And birthday. <laughs> A double dipper, Mary. <laughs> all right, children, I need your help. All right, it's a new one. We hadn't done it in a while. You ready? Hands up. 
May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.